please confirm the risk range values for gold, silver, or spot prices. Um, so, yeah, Seltz, if you uh, don't mind, we got Seltz on the switch again. Um, if you don't mind going to uh, slide six there. Oh, sorry, it's, uh, is it Marina that got that? Or Seltz, it doesn't really matter. But uh, point is, is uh, I pulled the uh, risk range there on the left. So that's the commodity risk ranges from today's, uh, it's from today's uh, risk range product. Uh, so you'll see right underneath there, it says uh, WTIC, bearish trend, light crude oil spot price. So um, those are all spot prices, you are correct. And uh, however, on the, on the right, I have uh, a portion of my watch list, and those are all the futures of various commodities in regards to uh, crude oil, natty gas, um, gold there is GC1, silver is SI1, copper is HG1. Uh, those are all the, 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 the near-term kind of uh, contract. And many will express uh, the exposure or their um, investment or kind of like you know, managing the risk range or how they want to take advantage of that through the futures. So I think maybe that could be a portion of, I wouldn't even say confusion, but just sort of uh, something uh, to be conscientious about. But yes, the, the spot price uh, is pretty darn close to that front month contract, but um, it's, uh, it is the spot price that would be reflective of those um, within those risk ranges. Uh, and again, it really just up to you in terms of how you want to express or track that. Uh, I, I put together um, an equivalent kind of ETF list back, I believe it was episode two, uh, but I'll, 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 I don't mind rehashing here this morning. Uh, so that would be the next slide seven. Thanks, Seltzer. Look, this guy is freaking unbelievable, Seltzer, back there. Uh, so we got global equities. So that's going to be your, your EQ. So again, this is uh, these are the ETFs, uh, that top left uh, segment there. So these are going to be the ETFs. So this would be a 6% max position size. Again, we volatility adjust these positions. Uh, so this is a really big component here. So you volatility adjust those positions depending on your risk parameters and your risk and, and to match your risk management style. Uh, so for SPX, uh, that's going to be the indices. Uh, you know, the ETF there would be SPY. Again, there's multiple to kind of express these. These are just ones that I typically go to. I think are likely the most common that, that, that one, one uses. So for the VIX, uh, VXX, uh, Comp Q, uh, that's be the triple Qs, uh, QQQ. Uh, Russell, uh, 2000 is IWM. Uh, China, SSNC, that's the Shanghai Composite. That'd be FXI. Uh, K Keith also likes KBA. Uh, so that, that, those would be two good ways of doing that. Uh, the Nikkei is uh, Japan, so that would be uh, EWJ. And then DAX, um, lately we've been using uh, DA, DAX, uh, so DAX uh, to represent the DAX. I think that one's pretty straightforward. Um, another one that people use would be EWG, uh, so G is in Germany. So again, that's the German index. EWG would be another way of expressing that, but, uh, but for whatever reason, Keith has lately been going to the DAX. Uh, next up, we got the fixed income. Again, please note, nothing truly perfectly matches the fixed income exposures that we have within the risk range product, which would be the, the U.S. Treasury 30-year, uh, the 10-year, the two-year in terms of U.S. Treasuries, and, uh, well, I guess high-yield growth certainly matches because that is indeed the ETF, so that would be HYG. Uh, but for the 30-year, you could use uh, you know, something like EDV or TLT. Uh, TLT is 20-plus uh, is years, so again, not quite the 30-year. Uh, and then the 10-year closest match is really kind of IEF, so that's kind of the 7 to 10-year exposure is really what that tracks. Again, if you kind of go into any of these ETFs, you're going to get the nitty-gritty in terms of um, what, what uh, you know, what, what's one, what do they hold, right? So that's a great, great way of doing it in terms of evaluating, okay, what am I actually getting in bed with here by, by putting this, port, uh, this position, this piece of inventory into my portfolio? Uh, lastly, that, that, that two-year treasury, uh, probably closest corresponds to the SHY, but again, uh, that one is uh, one to three years, I believe. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, one to three years. I was almost, I, I, I should just trust myself, trust my brain. Uh, one to three years is that uh, U.S. Treasury uh, ETF is SHY, but again, you know, closest proxy there probably to that, to that two-year. Uh, next up, we've got the FX component, so the foreign currencies. Uh, USD, um, that's, you know, if you're kind of looking at the in indices, that'd be the DXY. Uh, but really, the, the closest ETF would be UUP. 
Uh, these are all Invesco ETFs. They have the probably best currency ones around, or the most uh, anyway, the most widely available. Uh, so the Euro, FXE, uh, Japan, FXY, or sorry, the Japanese Yen, FXY. Uh, the pound, the British pound would be FXB, and then the Canadian dollar is FXC. So again, these are all uh, ways to express um, the FX currencies. Those would all be a 12% max position size, so just keep that in, 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 in uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, again, I probably should have put gold, now that I'm seeing this on the slide, up into the foreign currencies bucket. However, it lives in with the commodities on the risk ranges, so I just kind of grouped them as you see them there, really just from a kind of a seamless kind of one-to-one -one example. So for WTIC, uh, that'd be USO. Again, there are different ways of expressing oil. Uh, natty Gas, uh, UNG, Gold, GLD, uh, Copper, CPER. Uh, silver SLV and Bitcoin, um, which is represented on the risk range product as NYXBT as BITO. But again, lots of different ways of expressing this um, if you're wanting to combine. So for copper, for instance, there's an ETF called COPX, C-O-P-X. Uh, that includes some copper miners, so a bit more on the kind of equities front. But again, if, if copper is at the top end of the range or low end of the range and you know it's in, currently in bullish trend, um, doesn't necessarily mean that COPEX is going to also be at the bottom end of, end of its range, but you know certainly one way of kind of taking that information within the risk range product and then deploying it into uh, perhaps a slightly higher beta um, exposure like COPEX, uh, you could do it that way as well. That's that's I know many folks do that. Same thing with gold, right? If gold's at the you know you know the gold um, uh, spot price is at the kind of low end of the range, bullish trend. Uh, they'll, they'll, you know, many will kind of go and, and take a look, okay, where is GDX, what's GDX doing, um, what's GDXJ doing, uh, what's GLD doing, you know, in conjunction with kind of where is the dollar, where is the 10 year, et cetera, et cetera. So um, just wanted to kind of get into this here. I think uh, hopefully that's helpful. I can certainly share this chart in uh, the arena so that everybody's got it. Again, I think this is, um, if you kind of use Google or what have you, I mean, you can certainly figure this out, but I'm also here to help. Uh, as they kind of jokingly call me, the process professor here um, on the desk, uh, happy, to, happy to help all of Hedgeye Nation. Okay.